Movement headquarters has been very lucky when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. We had our company launch on February 16th, 2020 in New York City, which a month later became the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are so many companies that had to cancel performances this year, but somehow we were one of the very few groups that actually got to hold our performances. And not only did we get to hold our performances, they were our first performances. So I, I'm really grateful that we, we were able to accomplish that early on. There have been so many companies that have been so negative. I mean, the world has been negatively affected by this, but the arts are particularly vulnerable to practically anything that happens in the world. If the government chooses to do less funding for the arts, we're affected. If there's a recession, we're affected because we are technically entertainment. We are culture or entertainment. A lot of times we're not seen as essential. Um, but did you watch TV during the pandemic? <laughs> did you watch a movie? Did you listen to music to make yourself feel better? The arts are essential, which is very important for me to note. But we... Being in the early stages of our company, we were affected negatively in the sense that we were just starting to get the ball rolling and to, to get visibility and be seen. Um, and after, typically after you hold your, your performances, that's when you can reach out to people and say, hey, are you, did you like what we did? Are you interested in seeing more? Are you willing to support us? So we, what we lost was really an avenue to continue building a foundation of funding for our company. But at, on the other side of the coin, we were also uh, in a good place because being such a young company, as a pickup company where we hire dancers per performance, um, not having them on full contracts, uh, we don't have a, a facility that we have to pay rental at. When we rehearse for our productions, we have to pay a studio rental fee at a facility in the city. So we didn't have any overhead costs. So what we had in the bank at that time, we were able to just leave it there, take a step back, wait and watch to see what happened. So we were really lucky in that sense. And then also being very young and very small, we were very flexible with our programming. We initially were preparing to do an in-studio performance of solos that would be around the solstice back in June. We easily canceled that. We didn't lose any money because we hadn't quite gotten the facility yet. Once we realized that New York City was going to be able to open up a little bit after we had been in our quarantine, my wheels started turning and we very quickly developed our love letter performances, our outdoor installation performances that were pop up all throughout uh, New York City. We were in Gantry Plaza State Park in Queens, we were at the Brooklyn Bridge Park in Brooklyn, and then we were at Washington Square and in Central Park in Manhattan. So we were very flexible in that way. So we were, were still able to hold summer performances, but it wasn't necessarily in the way that we did. So now that we are in a place uh, to build this nutcracker, we have, to, we have to really look forward to the future. But for us, it's our, our biggest challenge is that we don't have access to wider audiences. So for if you want to help us out, the number one thing that you can do is you can share the good word. <laughs> you can share the, uh, what Movement Headquarters is, who we are, what we're doing with your friends, with your family, with your community, and just raise the visibility of who we are as a company because if we have more visibility and we have more eyes, that means that we have more support. More support comes in interest. Interest leads to people sitting in audiences, or in this case, standing in audiences and walking around. And that eventually translates to funding. That visibility translates to private donors being interested in, in uh, becoming a part of our family. That becomes the visibility of granting organizations, grant-making organizations that will see what we're doing and then want to help support us in that way too. So it really becomes this cycle. So for us, just sharing our content, 
Uh, if you are enjoying this content on our Patreon, tell your friends about this Patreon and get them to contribute and, and join. And the great thing about this Patreon campaign is that you're not just contributing and then waiting for us to put something out. Your contribution actually gets you content. So just sharing and helping us become more visible and growing our family is one of the best things that you can do for us.